All right, Tarot asks backwards here. Good evening, everyone. Uh, October 25th, 2023. Uh, coming on this evening because I wanted to know more about Mike Johnson beyond the two news articles I had read when I stopped working today. Um, and I'm not liking what I'm seeing. Of course, right? Um, this reading's for entertainment purposes only. Um, what I want to preface this with is that um, this person is a constitutional law scholar, um, yet they seem to have a very liberal, and I don't mean political point of view, liberal interpretation of what that constitution means based on some of the things they've done um, as far as abortion rights are concerned, fast-tracking certain things with Marjorie Taylor Greene, um, and the cards kind of reflect that. So let's get into it. Um, since the first, we got 228 cards together. That was not on purpose. There has to be a reason for it. It can't be coincidence. Um, Usually, I would say the first one is uh, the person about whom we're reading. He's holding out a rose. He's made concessions or offers to them. And I think it could be a replay of the McCarthy thing, only this time it could be a lot worse. Because I think with Gates having already mandated that vacate policy... Even if that didn't occur this time, which intuitively I don't think it did, I think enough of the MAGA party and enough uh, of the groundswell of support from the Tea Party faction and enough of the evangelicals within the party um, were taken or seduced because this often can mean seduction with the Rose by what he was offering and what I believe he was offering based on the reputation he has as far as some of the more right-wing extreme positions that he touts and some of the things that he has done that will be fundamentally and repeatedly done with rapidity and slyly done are going to be those things that, because this can mean fertility, that take more bodily autonomy away from women, okay? And we may see more of a death of that, okay? I, I, I don't, I know the readings of late have been gloomy and doomy when everyone thinks that everything is getting better and better. And everything is getting better and better. But I think it has to be brought to light what is really being magnified right now. What also concerns me is the sundial uh, or the time. Um, this We have the sun here and it kind of mirrors to time. There's only a certain amount of time that these things can be brought to light about his reputation because I'm thinking he will be an interim solution that won't last maybe more than six months, eight months, something like that. Because the reputation is knighting down to this card right here, which is the second male card. Um, and that I'm taking as either, and I'm not doing it on purpose. Um, it can be about masculinity in the utmost regard. And you see this one is the strong one. This one is more the sly one coming up here. But the time for the sly one and what he does being brought to light will, if it's not brought to light in time, it will benefit um, 
the patriarchy, as I pointed to last night, and what the patriarchy sees is its role in either its own downfall or the downfall it can bring to women's rights. So the reputation he has is tied bigly to what he's done to subjugate women for the good of men. Also, this trickery is going to continue. Okay, this card, knighting to this card. This is just another in a long line of fly-by-night mandates to get appropriations bills and as many possible things while they have the majority through. And what I'm getting is a general consensus had to be made as to who looks the best in front of the media, in front of the light, where the secrets can be embedded and not brought to light too quickly so they can get all of this done, okay? Um, the other thing that I see with this that's of concern to me is that as much of an imposition as time is, and they know their time is of the essence, they're going to become more and more frenzied when I see this here, this sort of scythe, trying to cut everything apart, get everything done, and what it's going to do is essentially rape women. Rape women of their rights. Um, and it can also have to do with, you know, because things like Planned Parenthood, they give men screenings as well. It's not just, you know, cervical screenings and all the other screenings. There are prostate screenings. We're going to see really, really, because we saw it in 2015 or 16 on a state level, Texas and what they did to Planned Parenthood. We're going to see more of that on a national level. Um, what also is at least positive about this. As I said, either this card over to this card means the death of abusive masculine energy. But what's kind of strange is we get an embellishment of this offer that Mike Johnson has made to the party with a bouquet coming in here, which in a lot of cases to me if you really, really, really look at it, um, can mean to me a gift. Um, and it can also be a mode of communication, okay? Like the code of people who are like-minded. So it's kind of like the lover's card. I feel as if he got into bed with them and he's a tool well, not that type of tool, but a tool that can be used with the same sort of breadth that Trump uses his lawyers to distort and either delay or obstruct in ways that we have never seen before, even within the last month or two. We're going to see that in a really, really heightened, hyper way. The reputation card, knighting to the death card, knighting to the male card, who is not he, Mike Johnson. Again, the, the death of the patriarchy, okay, is going to come from this. So I'm see conflicting energy or conflict, conflicting positive negative energy here. Um, the other thing I want to look at too is if we look at this, um, Mike Johnson's card, um, knighting to the sun card, he's a ham. Um, he 
is going to be saying and doing things that are going to arouse suspicion that will arouse controversy through his reputation, through the things he's done in the past, okay? Um, now, that trickery is going to continue as well, as long as he's in there, okay? He's here, this is here, the fox is here, trying to get away with something. I see all kinds of landmines, booby traps. Um, what else do I see? The party's reputation, which is already shot to hell, is going to be more done for after he's in there or while he's in there. Okay. Also, um, again, fertility, the right to bodily autonomy is in serious trouble. And please do look at what he feels about abortion. We already know this. It's being reflected in the cards, people. It came out today. Um, and we also know how he feels about LGBTQ rights. That came out today as well. There's nothing in these cards that astounds me. Um, what's the other thing I'm thinking here? Have I pretty much covered it? Um, one up, one over. Two over, one up. Yeah. So let's let's lose the pendulum for the remainder of this and see what we get. I have a couple other readings I kind of want to try tonight. Uh, please do like and subscribe if you're new here. Thank you for joining. Good evening, pendulum. Was Mike Johnson's ascension to Speaker of the House done with certain guarantees that more chaos or certain guarantees that more legislation that would basically appease MAGA and it's in the MAGA base would stand the best chance of getting through with him in the seat of speaker. Was his appointment to speaker of the house done with the guarantee that he stands the best chance general consensus among the party to get the 218 votes, that he could be the one that could do it. No. Um, it started off as a yes, but then it turned into a no which made me think that he probably told them, I'm not going to be able to do what, you know, Gates and all of them want me to do. I'll try. I'll try. And I'll try very, very hard. And he sold his soul the way McCarthy did. It's not going to end well. But it's not going to end well for them either. Did he sell, thank you for that, did he sell his soul in ways even Kevin McCarthy didn't when he decided to be appointed Speaker of the House? Did he sell his soul in ways that Kevin McCarthy even didn't when he was elected Speaker of the House? 
getting a circle. And a no. Did he have to outwardly promise anything to them? Let's do this. Did Mike Johnson have to outwardly promise? Thank you, Petulum. Did Mike Johnson have to outwardly state what he was going to do to the entire voting block of the Republican House? if he were to be appointed speaker. Kind of getting a, I'm getting a yes on that. All right, so he didn't, he didn't come out and say, I will do X, Y, and Z. Um, before that, we had something to the effect of he didn't outwardly promise anything. Was it felt more, thank you, was it felt that more organically, given his proclivities, what he's done in the past, what his, his shtick is, what his abilities are, he would be the most organic choice to try to move that MAGA agenda forward, even among the more centrist Republicans. I'm getting a yes on that because it's going, it's not going this way, it's going this way. Um, Will he be in office six months from now? No, will he be Speaker of the House six months from now? Thank you, by the way. Will Mike Johnson still be Speaker of the House six months from now? No. Um... Okay. All right, for entertainment purposes only, y'all. Look for the next one. <laughs>